Everybody, Stellar here at Kettering One, checking in team number 494, Martians. This team currently, as we're interviewing, the number one seed has a fantastic traversal climber, uh, but they're flailing their intake. You gotta love it going into their indexer and shooter. And talk to me more about this robot, by the way. I have RJ, Frank, and Emma, and we can't wait to detail more of what's gonna be happening here in this robot, all coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in robotics scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first chose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Now. So Frank, starting on this route, we're going to talk about the flailinator, as your team calls it. So talk to me about uh, what went into the design and process and kind of what made you choose this type of material for your intake as well. Okay, so for the type of material, we chose this because it's very grippy. And we thought that the more grip we could get on the ball, the faster it would intake. And moving along here to these wheels, the only, the sole purpose of this is to make sure it feeds properly into our little conveyor belt system because what would be happening is the ball would be getting stuck in this, in this system behind here and on the bumper. So we had that. We have this. This is pretty simple. It's adjustable. This was, this allowed us to be able to tighten it. We have some support so it doesn't shake around. And then this, the overall design is pretty simple. It's got a lot of rivets, um, got a camera, a 3D printed camera. We've got these little side panels. And what that does is it helps push the ball to the center. And if we come to the center, you can see it's kind of tapered off at the end. This is to help center the ball. And you've got this conveyor belt. I call it a conveyor belt. It's a little shaky, but that's okay because its main purpose is to be able to grab the ball and keep it moving along. Talk to me about from a testing perspective here. When you were looking at doing the flail on your robot, was that the first idea you came up with, or what were maybe some other ideas that didn't pass the test that made you want to go with this? So, the, I mean, this was pretty much our idea the whole time, but we had a lot of problems along the way. I mean, it's this is a design that we've used similar to the past. And actually, um, I think you should call it the fan, actually. It's yeah, giving me a it's, nice wrap here as well, too. It's so. fast. I think it's running somewhere near 100% power because we figured that we needed a fast intake. Can we, can we grab a cargo piece? Let's put that in and oh, see yeah. how that goes through, too. So as you can see, it just rockets straight to the back. And from there, we'll have the ability to shoot it, but we'll get back to that later. So, you know, we've got, we've got simple motors. These, they just, the, okay, so we use Falcons for things that we need to control the power of. These kind of just run at full blast, these normal motors. Well, let's head into that shooter next. Uh, and RJ, talk to me a little bit more about uh, some of the design for that. Now, I'm very interested to hear you, you all have a low shooter going into the high uh, hub, right? Um, were you concerned about like blocking or anything like that, like robots getting in the way or anything? Um, a little bit we were, but uh, it shoots really fast, so there's not much time for another robot to get in the way of it. Um, it took a lot of time and a lot of practice to get the angles and the arch right for it to go into the, uh, the high goal. And, um, we recently just added this piece right here. This uh, negates the backspin on the ball, sure. so it's more like a knuckleball going in. Um, we also had a lot of issue with it getting stuck in certain places, so that's why this uh, roller's here, to help push the ball along. Uh, there's also a strip of Flexan along the bottom, zip tied down to these Chiros, uh, to keep the ball from getting stuck in any other unwanted places. Uh, these two wheels here are the main shooter for the to shoot the balls. And uh, this thing goes really, really fast. Um, we also took a little bit of time to think about the compression to see how the ball would spring out. So that's another reason that we have the angle, 
the way it is. Your, your robot has been very accurate with the shooting, yet you don't have a turret, you don't have a sword drive or anything like that. So what is really attributed to such the accuracy and also how quick you're able to shoot as well too? Um, well, I think practice is a big help and uh, this camera right here helps us l uh, line up extremely quickly. Well, as we uh, start to uh, wrap up on your robot here, Emma, talk to me a little bit about uh, the climber uh, that you have here. It has been rock solid. It has really been attributed to your number one seed here so far as we're recording this. Uh, talk to me about what's gone into the monkey bar climb. And I know we got a little uh, extra uh, piece we can show as well too with it. Yeah, so it, none of this is the first design, uh, especially the latches. The latches have, this is the sixth design yet, and uh, it's worked pretty well so far. So how the latch works is we have uh, three main pieces, the hook and the piece that the bar slides into. It works by slamming onto the bar and then it releases with the top piece sliding out and latching afterwards. See, both of them cannot unlatch at the same time. So both sides cannot be unlatched. So the, when these sides are unlatched, uh, these ones aren't, by this little mechanism. So when this pulls one way, it moves this out of the way. It allows it to move freely. But then it slides back into place. When you were uh, looking at the uh, game challenge for what Rapid React is, was the traversal climb, was that like number one of what your team wanted to accomplish? Or how did you kind of prioritize how important the traversal climb was for you? Uh, we instantly knew it was our number one priority to get the traversal climb done. Well, 494 Martians, your team has been looking fantastic. Thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot here. Uh, hopefully, keeping with that number one seed as we record this, we hope to see a championship coming from you here. Uh, but regardless, good luck the rest of the competition season. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their combat battle bots team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.